Hello and welcome to the Electrical Maintenance Safety Device Installation PowerPoint presented by me, Mr. Paul Goodbody. As you can see, EMSD is the short acronym for the Electrical Maintenance Safety Device. A good rule of thumb while uh, getting your tools ready is to make sure that you have everything in place before you get on site. There is nothing worse than you actually arrive on site, all the power is off, and, there is, and you have some of your tools are missing. So be aware that you need to make sure that you have a list with everything you need. Depending on what type of EMSD you're going to fit will depend on what type of tools you will require. So the essential tools that you'll require for any EMSD fitting will be A, a tape measure, B, a centre punch, C, a half round file for clearing burrs, and D, a magnetic line laser. This is what you require to make sure that the window is being inserted or installed correctly and at the right level. You will also require a drill motor or a power drill, a 1 to 1 8 inch hole saw, a small uni bit, tapping fluid, extra pilot bits in case of breakages and a fender washer. And we use the fender washer so we don't actually mark the surface of the panel. We recommend that while fitting an EMSD, you fit this whilst the cover has been removed. The reasons are that if you leave the cover on, metal shavings are bad for electrical equipment because they are very conductive and it could cause a dark flash once the, the panel is re-energised. So part one, installing of a square EMSD. So this is what we are looking for after we have installed it looking nice and professional. The main tool that you require for cutting out a square EMSD will either be A, a nibbler, or B, a jigsaw. Now there are no uh, disadvantages of using either, except for the nibbler is a bit slower and a bit noisier, and the jigsaw, depending on what type you get, again the higher grade jigsaw you get, the better the the result again with the blade. Again you'll need a high speed blade due to the thickness of the enclosures as it says there between 12 to 16 gauge. Now there are thicker grade uh, metal on for uh, transformers or if you're working on any external uh, switch gear and again another one you can use uh, but we don't use it a lot is an angle grinder. Uh, the only issue with an angle grinder is that, a, due to the sparks, some companies may want you to use a hot works. Uh, and so if you're on a hot works certificate, there's a lot of more paperwork to do. So depending on which type of gradient there is, depends on which tools you use. But as stated earlier on here, it doesn't matter if you use a nibbler or a jigsaw. All EMSDs come with exactly the same things in their boxes. So here illustrated is a cap 12. Inside there you'll get your window or your EMSD. You will get your template and you'll also get your ID label. This is probably the most important area of fitting an EMSD. You have to make sure that the EMSD is fitted correctly and in the right field of view. There's no point putting it lower than it needs to be because obviously once the panel is put back and then you look through with your infrared camera and you don't see what you want to see. So this is the most important bit. So ensure that you have put your window in the correct area on the panel. A good habit to get into is put a little arrow either with a T or a B for top or bottom. I have found that this has helped me immensely through the years. To ensure that you get no bubbles when placing the template onto the surface, you see that the template actually backing comes off in two halves. And you will find this a lot easier to lay down than if the whole thing came off in one go. Roll the template onto the cover, either doing from the top or the bottom. You can it up yourself which way you do this, uh, but when you have actually put it onto the surface, uh, a little hint is use either a wet rag or a dry rag and just push out any air dimples that may have been caused uh, when putting the template onto the surface. When fitting an EMSD with a cover, please be aware that normally the door opens downwards. You can fit EMSDs vertically, so the door would open up at the side, 
but the rule of thumb normally is that this style of EMSD is fitted uh, horizontally, so the door will open downwards. Uh, there is a small T and a little B on the template tenue, which is the top and the bottom. Let's get to work. So here we are now starting to drill the panel. And so the first thing we will do is actually put in our small little pilot holes for when we want to cut out with either the nibbler or the jigsaw. We recommend on the caps uh, 6, 12 and maybe the 4 range, four little holes in the corners. Uh, but anything bigger, the, the cap 24 and the cap 18, uh, do the four normal corners but then I would also recommend that you also put holes halfway along as well that's top and bottom just so when you are coming along with the jigsaw or the nibbler you've got something to head to and you haven't got such a long draw to each hole this is your panel ready now for the nibbler or the jigsaw this is also a good time to uh, use your little hand broom to sweep away any excess swarf Using a step down drill bit, drill your holes uh, for the studs. Uh, these could be up to a quarter inch in diameter. Uh, and if they start to get a bit of warm or the paper starts to catch, if you put a dab of bit of your, your oil on there, that will alleviate that issue. So here we are using the nibbler. And as you can see, we're actually now going along uh, from the top using the guideline all the way through to the next hole. And then we'll continue that all the way around until the centre part of the panel has come out. So this is just a close-up uh, image of the nibbler, but also it just shows you what you can do also you with a grinder or a jigsaw. Uh, the principles are the same, you just keep along the line, nice straight edge until the centre part comes out. So once the uh, panel has been removed from the centre, if you have overshot like this here at the moment, at this area here, as you can see, you can nibble away or use the jigsaw or use a file and just so you get the nice straight edge. So the template has been designed so that it will peel off quite easily from the surface, especially if it's nice and clean. And this is another way of keeping the swarf down, because if the swarf does get stuck under the paper sometimes, it just makes it a little bit harder to remove. But if you've been working nice and clean, you just get hold of the little template and you just pull off the remaining parts. I use a Dremel on this one. Uh, I find this a lot easier, especially if I'm doing a big load of EMSD fits. I find this a lot easier to use a little Dremel with a nice little grinding stone on it. Just go around on the inside of the edges and that gets rid of any little sharp burrs that you may catch your fingers on later. If you've actually gone along and uh, done everything perfectly, the window should fit first time. Uh, but this is where you find out if you may have to just make the little holes for the studs a bit bigger just so they slip in or that the, you haven't caught the edge for the window on the side. Again, this is where you use your rat tail uh, files where you just make the hole a tad little bigger or just make the edges just a little bit wider so that everything fits like a glove. So there we are, we're nearly there now. So we've actually now pushed the uh, window through and uh, the studs. So we've actually now put the nuts on the end. Recommend that you do this nice and finger tight all the way round. And then you do the last final bit will be doing the torquing of the nuts. Uh, and when you do do the torquing of the nuts, do opposites. So if you do bottom left, do top right. This will then prevent the gasket from twisting and then breaking the IP seal. There's the end result, the cap 12 fitted to the panel. As you can see, it's nice and square, nice and straight, no burrs, no damage to the polymer, and that's what we're looking for as a finished product. If you're fitting a cap E and V, the process is exactly the same as described with the cap 12. There is no difference, the templates are the same, the process is the same. The only thing you have to be aware of is obviously the, the cover for the EMSD EMV is a lot larger. So that's what you've just got to be aware of. The mounting of round EMSDs. When you remove the round EMSD out of its box, you will first have to undo the screws that are holding the backing plate on. Ensure that you use the correct knockout size punch. 
do not get over enthusiastic and get a larger punch than required as you'll find that this will be too near the drill holes and the for the securing plate and it will cause you issues later on during the fit following the same sort of sequences that we did for the square emsds ensure that your field of view is spot on for your round emsds but be aware that the, on the round emsds your field of views will obviously be smaller than the square emsds fitting the round emsds is very similar to the square emsds that the cover pivot will go downwards so if you are fitting emsds one above the other be aware that there has to be a gap for the cover so it doesn't impede on the second emsd if you are fitting one drill through the middle a quarter inch center hole this is in preparation for when you do use your 1 8 hole cutter carry on with your quarter inch drill holes and drill out the securing plate holes once all quarter inch holes have been drilled wipe away any excess swarf as this will cause any issues later on with scratching drill out the center with a drill center hole one to one eight inch this is in preparation for the hydraulic spindle connect your hydraulic punch spindle through the center and connect up the cutter at the bottom ensure that the cutter spindle and the cutter are bang on the line and not over or not under use the punch until you have punched all the way through the advantage is of using the hydraulic punch as seen in the picture is that there are no rough edges and it gives you a very nice clean cut remove the slug from the cutter and then discard this into the waste recycling bin remove the remaining parts of the template again this should come off quite easily however there are some times when it's got hot or whatever or there's bits of swarf underneath and it, it's come away in bits just use a slight bit of detergent uh, and you'll find that this will come off easily remove any burrs on both sides of the uh, plate uh, to ensure that the securing plates will be held on nice and tight ensure that there are no burrs either on the center hole or any of the securing holes any burrs that are found make sure that you file and clean the edges uh, as this will cause you issues when putting the securing plate on as stated position the window right side up and you'll find on the backing plate and also on the top of the gasket the word top ensure that this is at the uh, both uh, correspond and you will find that the holes will be matching so the rule of thumb and a good engineering practice is to carry on tighten these in the star shape position as stated in the picture this will cause less stress on the backing plate and will ensure that the gasket stays flat when tightened and so there you have it the finished product a nicely fitted vpfr emsd uh, ensuring that the wording is the correct way up and that the window is not put on upside down and that you have the if you loosen the screws a little bit and, and do the pivot point at the bottom you then should be able to relax the lid so it goes all the way down ensuring that once you have finished with the window uh, that you then close the uh, lid up and then secure the, the retaining screws so a quick recap so the question by default the round window cover swings and the answer is down so ensure that the window cover goes down you tighten the round window in what pattern the answer to that is the star pattern it is a good engineering practice and it ensures that the retaining ring and also the gasket is not overstressed and the final one tighten the screws up to what it's 16 millimeters or fully hand tight
the fitting of an ultrasound port or fisheye infrared EMSD. This will follow the same practice of fitting the round EMSDs except for you will not require the hydraulic punch. So just like a normal sized EMSD, remove the backing plate but ensure that you do not remove the gasket as this is glued on. So when putting the template on to the switch gear, you have to be aware of what you are fitting. So if you are fitting this as an IR fisheye port, you have to ensure that you still get a good field of view. However, if you are fitting this as an ultrasound port, you can put these sort of normally anywhere because sound travels and you are not looking. However, be aware that you do not impede any other items on the front of the panel. On this size of EMSD, there are only four quarter inch holes to be drilled. Drill out the centre of your small EMSD with a one to one eighth inch hole cutter. Again, use a burring tool on both sides of the panel to ensure there are no sharp edges. When trying to fit the small EMSD, you still find that there are a few edges that are catching, it will not sit properly. So again, get out a file and just give it a bit of a tweak and you'll find that it will fit perfectly. Just like the larger EMSDs, ensure that the pivot pin is at the bottom, ensure that the writing is the right way round and that the window opens downwards. Again, this is some areas that sometimes is overlooked, but again, this is quite important, is the transmissivity of the window and the label. Remove the backing from the uh, transmissivity label and place it above or next to your EMSD. Ensure that the surface you are putting the label on is now as clean and tidy, uh, as this will cause the label not to stick properly. So the things you need to include on this label are the transmissivity of the EMSD. You would need to know what its location number is. Does the window have a number or have you given it a number? And what is the lens material? What type of polymer or is it a crystal? And also in the large remarks book, what is what, what are you looking at? Uh, a good little rule of thumb I use is I use the clock face. So if I have a, um, a buzz bar and it's at three o'clock, I would write down target area three o'clock. So remove the backing on the protective cover and then put the protective cover over the label and making sure you have a nice tight seal so it keeps it waterproof. And that is the end result. Um, this is the final act of fitting any EMSD are the labels. So I hope I've explained the fitting of square and round EMSDs for you. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, again if you need any information please go to www.iris.com.